The Independent, the Sky's new American political thriller starring Jodie Turner-Smith, Brian Cox and John Cena, directed by Amy Rice and written by Evan Parter. The story follows Washington Chronicle journalists Eli James and Nicholas Booker, played by Turner-Smith and Cox, as they cover a US election where Cena plays independent candidate Nick Serling, an Olympic medalist long jumper who is threatening to break up the status quo of America's two-party system. Of course, since they're journalists, they pull on threads and spools unravel. Sky has been on a roll with in-house productions recently and we talked about Dublin Narcos at the start of the show and also we had last year Mass and Aisha were among the best releases of the year for me and this is kind of awkward but when I watched The Independent my thoughts were you can't win them all. <laughs> the Independent feels like someone wanted to give Succession a sorkin s twist and combine it with the newsroom, even going as far as to hire Brian Cox to play a journalist. And that's kind of a thing where it's like he they had the idea and it's be careful what you wish for because they went out and got what they wanted. They've got Brian Cox here. They've got Cena here. They've got a lot of good money being put into this. And then when it comes time for the script to actually hold up its end of the bargain, it's frankly, it's lacking. At one stage, Cox laments not being able to read fiction because he's too busy having to write columns. This film made me wish I was watching a good fiction instead of what feels like watching extremely talented people act out your crazy uncle's long, nonsensical 3am Facebook political rants that don't seem to go anywhere or actually have a point to make by the end of it. It's just, I'm generally dissatisfied and someone needs to do something about it. Because while I obviously won't give anything away plot wise, while that time seems like this movie wants to say a lot of different things, but just can't find its way. By the time you get to the end, you realize it doesn't even have a point to make. Do they like the status quo in America or do they hate it? Do they think someone should break through the two party system or are they saying that the system itself is impenetrable? It's like, did you ever see someone who has their intelligence questioned on Twitter or the likes and it hits a nerve so they feel the need to overcompensate and start using unnecessary flowery language like, haha, would someone who isn't intelligent say the word superfluous? <laughs> I think not, my good sire. And let's put this under the same radar and take some lines of dialogue here and see if it passes that test, okay? These are actual lines from the movie, okay? Do you think anyone in the real world talks this way? Institutions are crumbling. Reality is under attack. Another one. We've seen what happens when a narcissist with no experience turns <laughs> delusions of grandeur into reality. So what are we saying? Is that a thing real people say or is that a thing your crazy uncle says on Facebook? Let's do one more. I have no desire to commit career suicide just as the lifetime achievements roll in on top of my pension. Literal suicide is another question, but you're not my therapist. Now get out of my office. Are, are you all right, mate? <laughs> I stopped taking this movie seriously early into it when they had John Cena literally use his professional wrestling catchphrase, their time is up, our time is now, in a serious context early into the movie. You've got every tick box cliche here. You've got an obnoxious white editor talks down to an overlooked but clearly talented young black reporter before passing her idea onto an arrogant young white journalist who complains that it's a tough time for people like him. It's filled with cheap shortcuts, like you've got the corrupt super PAC member who's also a bit of a sex pest just because we need to know he's actually a bad guy they don't do anything with these things they just take the shortcuts to kind of tell you this person good and this person bad because the script isn't enough for you to feel how you're going to feel either way and look like i said there's nothing wrong with these premises but if you're gonna bring them up do something with them don't just throw everything you have into one big pot without any thought into it and hope that the end result is going to be mitchell and star quality there is zero nuance despite the plot itself trying to be nuanced and saying wait is there's one side that's black one side that's white is there a third party independent character who could be a shades of gray cena is becoming an excellent character actor and i admire him trying to broaden his horizons here but his casting is fundamentally flawed i mean even if i tell you that his character is originally famous for being a long jumper does 50 immediate things not come into your head why that would be an issue and this is fiction by the way it didn't need to be this way there's no grand finale here where he challenges his fellow present pre presidential nominees to a long jumping contest to decide the future of democracy he easily could have been just a a weightlifter or a wrestler and made more sense but they threw a dart at the board they decided he'd be a long jumper and so we're absolutely going for it 
Cox and Turner Smith try their best here, but there's no juice to be squeezed from these roles unless the source material is compelling. We've just seen the embattled reporters try to fight the system from the inside trope too many times. Instead, you just want to watch Brian Cox be Logan Roy. You just want to watch John Cena be Peacemaker. And you want to watch Jody Turner Smith be Queen. Not because they can't do roles outside of what they're best known for, but because you want people this talented to be in situations where they're set up to actually succeed. Unfortunately, the independent is not that. Thank you.